Chapter 9. Life is dangerous. So out we go. It's a habit by now. Freak riding high up on my shoulders and using his little feet to steer me if I forget where we're going. Not that we always know. Freak likes to make things up as he goes along. You think you're just walking down this ordinary sidewalk and really you're crossing this dangerous bridge the kind made of vines that hangs high up in the air over a deep canyon. And when Freak makes it up, it seems so real. You're afraid to look down or you'll get dizzy and fall off the sidewalk. Don't ever look down, he says. Just keep your eyes closed. And then he puts his hands over my eyes and tells me to keep walking straight. One foot, he says. Now the next. I'm fighting to keep my balance and his hands are making me dizzy. One more step, Freak says. Steady, okay, steady. Now lift your hoof, I, I mean your, your foot. There, we made it. And he takes his hands away and I see we've crossed the street. Go east, he says when I get to the end of the block. That way, mighty beast, yonder lies the east. I go. How do you know which way is east? And then something, uh, something glinting in my eye and, and Freak is showing me this little compass. The official Cub Scout compass? That's a clever disguise so you don't know how valuable it is, he says. This is actually a rare and valuable artifact passed down by generations. Lancelot used it and so did Sir Gwen. And for a time, the Black Knight kept it on a chain next to his heart. I go, so the Black Knight was a Cub Scout, huh? And Freak laughs and says, ha ha, that way. Uh, we, we go to the east on a secret mission. We walk for miles. Way beyond the pond and the playground and the school. And for a while, we're going through this really ritzy neighborhood full of big white houses and blue swimming pools. Freak keeps saying stuff like, That's the castle of Averice! And, Yonder lies the bloated moat! And when we go under a tree, he says, Proceed with caution. Or, All clear! Depending how low the branches come down. Oh, come on, we must be east, I say. Have we got to yonder yet? Because my stupid feet are getting sore. But Freak pats me on the head and says, Yonder always lies over the next horizon. You can look it up if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you. On and on. Block after block. Through all these neighborhoods that Freak says are really secret kingdoms, I'll bet we've gone 10 miles at least because my legs think it's a hundred, and even as light as Freak is, he's starting to feel heavy. We're almost there, he says. Turn at the end of the block. Where is it we're going? You'll see, he says, and you will be amazed. Ahead, there's this busy intersection, cars whizzing by, and it all seems sort of familiar. Can we stop for a Coke, I say. Grim gave me a dollar, I'm a big deal, but we can split it. Freak goes, then that shall be your reward, faithful steed. Tinted sucrose and bubbles of air, onward, onward to the fortress. It turns out the fortress looks like part of a hospital, which it is. The regular hospital's around the front and there's this new building added out back, medical research. It reads over the door, and I know because I made Freak spell it out. Uh, does that mean they do experiments and stuff? Freak says, indeed they do. What kind of experiments? I ask. Can you keep a secret? He says. Do you swear on your honor? Sure. On my honor. Freak is really excited. He's shifting around on my shoulder so much, I'm afraid he'll fall off. That's not good enough, he says. You'll need to swear by blood. You mean like cut myself? 
Well, now, he says, and you can tell he's thinking about it real hard. An actual incision isn't necessary. Uh, it's the same thing if you just um, spit on your hand. Huh? Yeah, saliva is like blood without the red, he says. Do as I say. Spit into your hand. I spit into my hand. Just a little drop. But Freak says it doesn't matter how much. A single molecule would work. Because it's the principle of the thing. Now put your hand over your heart. I put my hand over my heart. Now swear on your heart that the data you are about to receive will be divulged to no one. I swear. Freak bends down and he's got his hand cupped around my ear and he's whispering. Inside the research building is a secret laboratory called the Experimental Bionics Unit. The unit's mission is to develop a new form of bionic robot for human modification. What's that? I say. <laughs> Speak of this to no one, but at some future time as yet undetermined, I will enter the lab and become the first bionically improved human, Max. I still don't know what it means, I say. Bionics! And please don't, don't make me look it up in the dictionary. Bionics! It's a science of design replacement parts for the human body! You mean like mechanical arms and legs? Ah, oh, that's ancient history, Freak says. Bionics unit is building where a whole new body, just my size. Yeah, what'll it look like? A robot? A human robot, Freak says. Also, it'll look a lot like me, only enlarged and improved. Yeah, right, I say. Let's go home. My feet are tired. Freak tugs on my hair. It's true, he says, with his voice getting high and excited. I've been in there. It's a special unit I have to go every few months for tests. They've taken my measurements, analyzed my blood and metabolic rates. They've monitored my cardiac rhythms and my respiratory functions. I've already been x-rayed and CAT scanned and, and sonogrammed. They're feeling, fitting me for a body transplant. I'm going to be the first. And I can tell he really means it. This isn't pretend quest or making houses into castles or swimming pools into moats. This is why we came here, so Freak could show me where he's been. The place is very important to him. I understand this much, even if I still don't understand about bionics or what it means to be a human robot. Will it hurt, I ask, getting your parts replaced? Freak doesn't answer for a while. And then he says in a stern, smart voice, Sure, it will hurt. But so what? Pain is just a state of mind. You can think your way out of anything, even pain. I'm pretty worried about the whole deal, and, and I go, But why do you want to be the first? Can't somebody else be the first? Isn't it dangerous? Ah, life is dangerous! Freak says, and you can tell he's thought a lot about this. And after a while, he kicks me with his little feet and he says, Let's go home. <laughs>